Welcome back once again, all of my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today, I have another very easy recipe for you that I know you all will love. Today, I am going to show you how to make the easiest keto tamales that you will ever make. These require no corn husks because I know, depending on where you live, sometimes it can be impossible to find corn husks. And these require no specialty cooking items. I am going to show you how to cook these tamales using your stove, a cake pan, and a cooling rack. Super, super easy. And if you want a printable version of this recipe, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find a printable version of this recipe and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase will go to me and help support the channel. So while you do all that, let's get cooking. Drain and rinse a 15 ounce can of whole baby corns, then place them on a cutting board and cut them into small pieces. Place the corn pieces into a large food processor. Process in 20 to 30 second intervals until the corn is smooth and mushy. If you need to, scrape down the sides of the processor bowl as needed so that all the corn gets completely processed. Then set that aside for just a minute. In a large mixing bowl, combine 28 grams or about one fourth cup of coconut flour, a half tablespoon of the dry taco seasonings of your choice, I'm using a half teaspoon of garlic powder, a half teaspoon of onion powder, and one teaspoon of chili powder. You can use whatever seasonings you want. Add a fourth teaspoon of salt and a fourth teaspoon of xanthan gum or psyllium husk powder. This is going to help bind your masa together a little better. That way when you go to roll your tamale, the masa won't fall apart on you. Sift everything all together until it's fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Then set that aside for just a minute. Come back to your corn mush that's in your processor. Add 28 grams or around two tablespoons of coconut oil or lard to your corn mush. Then process again in 20 to 30 second intervals until the mixture is smooth. Make sure you're scraping the size of the processor bowl as needed so that everything gets completely combined together. Gradually fold the corn mixture into your dry ingredients until everything is fully combined. Then use your hands and massage the dough until a smooth, lightly moist dough has formed. The dough is going to be the consistency of kind of a thick peanut butter. Remember, we're using coconut flour, so the masa is not going to be as thin as traditional masa would be. Once your masa is all combined... Then set that aside for just a second. Cut five pieces of parchment paper into eight by 10 rectangles. This is gonna be your corn husk substitute. If you want these to be more like the shape of a traditional corn husk, then instead of cutting it into the eight by 10 inch rectangles, you can cut it into a nine by nine by three inch cone. To me, that takes more work, so I'm just cutting them into rectangles. Place the parchment paper one at a time vertically on a clean work surface. Then scoop the masa out about three tablespoons at a time onto the center of each one of the pieces of parchment paper. Spread the masa out to a circle that's around seven to eight inches in diameter and about a fourth inch thick or you can press it out to whatever size or shape you'd like. There's really no specific size or shape for the masa. The main thing is you want to make sure you're keeping about a half inch space around the edges and the top of the parchment paper and you want to leave a large space down at the bottom because you're going to need to fold the paper up once the tamales are rolled in the parchment paper. So try not to spread the masa more than three fourths way down of the paper. That way you have plenty of room to fold your paper up once it's all put together. 
Once you have the masa spread over the parchment paper, then add about three tablespoons of the filling of your choice and place it slightly off centered of the masa. You don't want it smack dab in the middle. It's easier to roll it if it's just slightly off centered. Now you can use any filling you want. I'm just using a ground beef filling. I just cooked up some ground beef, seasoned it with some taco seasonings, added a little bit of salsa and a little bit of my keto refried bean substitute. That's all this is, quick, easy. Again, you put whatever filling you want. And if you want to, you can sprinkle a little bit of cheese over the top of your filling. Grasp one side of the parchment paper and use it as a guide to fold one side of the masa completely over the filling. Make sure that you are completely covering the filling when you fold the masa over. You don't want any of the filling to squish out when it's cooking. Then roll the tamale over one more time just like you're rolling a burrito, you just want to roll it one more time. Don't roll it several times, just one more time, folding it over like a burrito. Then find the bottom of your tamale and take that extra paper that's down at the bottom and fold it up toward the tamale. Then use some cooking string or do what I do and use a thin piece of parchment paper and tie it loosely around the tamale packet. This is just going to help secure everything together while it's cooking. Make sure when you're tying the string or the parchment paper around the packet that you don't do it super tight. You want it tight enough to secure the package, but not so tight that you're putting an indention into your tamale. Now, traditionally, you would put your tamales into a steamer and steam them for about an hour. You can do this if you want to be more on the traditional side, but I'm going to show you how to steam these in the oven. That way you don't need any type of special equipment and it's much quicker. It takes about half the time to steam your tamales in the oven as it would in a steamer. In order to steam these in the oven, before you even start making your masa, you would need to preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Then once your masa is made and your tamales are all rolled and secured, you would place three cups of boiling water into a three quart casserole dish or a nine by 13 cake pan. Make sure the water is boiling. You want the cooking process to immediately start. Then place an oven fryer basket or a cooling rack on top of the casserole dish or the cake pan, whichever one that you've got that boiling water in. Make sure that the water does not touch the oven fryer basket or the cooling rack at all. If the water touches the rack and the packets of the tamales get wet, they will not cook properly. So if the water is touching your rack, then just dump out however much you need to dump out until it no longer is touching your rack. Lay the tamales down flat into your oven fryer basket or on top of the cooling rack. Make sure you don't overcrowd your tamales. Leave a little bit of space in between each one of the tamales. That way you can have an even cook. Then place it into your preheated oven and bake at 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes or until the masa is no longer wet. Once the tamales are baked, remove them from the oven and let them rest in your oven fryer basket or on your rack for about 10 minutes so they can continue cooking and firm up just a little bit. After 10 minutes, you're going to check the tamales and make sure they're done. The way you do this is you just stick your finger into the open side of the tamale packet and just touch the masa a little bit. Make sure that it is not wet. It's going to be soft because that's how masa is. It's supposed to be soft, but it should not be wet. If there's any wetness to it, then you need to pop it back into the oven for a couple minutes until it's no longer wet. For me, it's perfect just now, just the way it is. So once your tamales are completely done cooking, place the tamale packet on the serving plate of your choice. Carefully unroll the tamale. Then if you want to, you can top it with some cheese or some salsa or whatever desired toppings. If you want to, you can eat it plain if you want to. But to me, I like it with a little bit of salsa and a little bit of cheese. Now this only makes five tamales. So if you're wanting more than that, you can multiply the recipe and it'll still turn out great. If you do have any leftovers, allow the leftovers to cool completely and store them in an airtight container in your refrigerator for up to three days, or you can wrap the tamales in some foil and freeze them for about six months. To reheat the tamales, if they are frozen, it's best to 
place them in your refrigerator and thaw them out overnight before you reheat them. Coconut flour is so sensitive to moisture. You don't want it to be defrosting in the oven while it's cooking. It could affect the texture of your masa. Then you would place your tamale on a baking sheet and place it in a preheated 400 degree oven. Heat it for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it is heated through. Or you can wrap your tamale in a paper towel, place it on a microwave safe plate and microwave on high in 30 second intervals until it's heated through. It usually takes about one to one and a half minutes depending on the wattage of your microwave. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.